Hi, I'm Martin Perhiniak. Today I'm going to show you how to create a cinegraph in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Using all these amazing new video features, we can create something looking like a photograph but at the same time moving. These are the cinegraphs. Some of, the, some of you might know about them. Let me just show you the final product. So I'm going to press space, which will start the playback. And as you can see, in this image, we have the girl moving around, but everything else is static. So it's almost like a still photograph in the background, but the foreground, she is moving around. Now I set the playback to loop, so it's always going round and round. And as I said, this is the final product, but I'm going to show you in this tutorial quickly how to create something like this. Now, first of all, it's also good to know or good to think about what would be the best subject for a cinegraph. I would say the following things are the best to follow. First of all, it's good to have something which will make it easier to mask uh, the image. In this case, I'm using the tree. You will see how it works. But first of all, that's a good thing to isolate the moving object from its background with something like a frame or something which is easy to make a selection around. In this case, as I said, that's the tree. That's the first first thing. The next thing that you should uh, need uh, you should think about before you create the cinegraph is that you create a background or find a background where there's some kind of movement. The busier the background, the better. You will make this background completely static, so you will only use a frame of the background, but you have to be able to capture one frame where it's really busy. In this case, what you can see on my image, the most important part or the, the best part of the background is the cyclist, because that really shows motion. It's a frozen second or moment in time. Once you have these two together, you should also uh, try to make or come up with some kind of movement which is easy to repeat. So in this case it's the girl turning r left and right which is something was quite simple to make it look uh, repeated. So once you have all these the only thing you need to do is to set up your camera on a stand and uh, capture a video, a short video, in my case it was around 15 seconds. Once you capture that you can just simply use that video file in Photoshop and after that point, after you have the video file, you can do everything directly in Photoshop. So let me show you the final product in the timeline, in the video timeline. These are the layers that I have. I have a couple of adjustment layers. I have the video and I have a, a two, actually two rasterized frame from the video. Now I'm going to show you from scratch how I did this. And for that I'm going to create a new document and I use the HDTV format because that's the format that my camera uh, records into. So I'm going to click on OK and I don't need the guides in this case so I'm going to go to view, show and I can hide the guides. Then I will create a video timeline. So I'm going to choose the timeline panel. If you don't see the timeline panel, you can always go to the window menu and choose timeline. And then click on create video timeline. Now it will create a timeline, but there will be no video yet. To be able to add the video, you just need to click on this little plus sign here on the right uh, side, and then choose the video that you would like to use. In this case, that's the video I need. I click on OK and then I can delete the empty frame. I don't need the empty frame. So now we already have the video and as you can see, the original video has everything moving. So the person in the background is walking, uh, the leaves are, are moving as well. So that was the original video and I'm going to only use her movement and I'm going to freeze a, a moment in the background. Now, uh, to be able to do this, first of all, I need to go a bit closer to the video, so see a bit more of it, and then I'm going to drag the right side or the end point of the video. I would like to end it somewhere here, 
just before she turns back and I would like to start it when she starts to turn from the left to the right. So I easily edited already the video and now I only have the parts where I can see her turning from left to right and then turning back from right to left. So these are the parts I need for my video and that's it and as you can see it starts again. Now what I would like to do first of all is to add a couple of adjustments to this video. So I'm going to the adjustments panel, choose vibrance and increase the vibrance all the way up to 100. That will really make the whole video nice and colorful. So if I turn it on and off you can see that's a big big difference, already much better. Then I can use levels and make the image or the video a bit more uh, higher contrast. So once again without and with the levels so it's a bit uh, stronger contrast in the video. So let's see now, uh, I'm going to press space and we will see the video. As you can see with the adjustment layers, it's already much, much better, looks much better. And now all I need to do is to separate the foreground and the background, because I only want her to move. Um, that's why I'm going to use the quick selection tool select the video layer and I'm going to draw over her and the tree to make a selection. This is an amazing thing that we are working with the video file but still we are able to make selections just like with images. I'm pressing, uh, holding down the Alt uh, or Option button to remove some parts from my selection, something like this. It doesn't have to be that accurate. And as soon as I have my selection, maybe I make a selection like there around the hair. So as soon as I have my selection, I can use this as a mask on the video group. So I select the video group and I click on create a mask. So now I see her and I, I have the background hidden. So when I move around, you can see we only see the foreground, the tree and her looking around. To be able to see the background, I will need to freeze a moment from the video. But because in this video there was only one guy walking around, it's not busy enough. To add the next video file, I'm going to Bridge. And from Bridge, I just simply select the video and drag and drop it into Photoshop. That will create a new video file and it has a separate layer as well. And as you can see, if I move the timeline around, there is a moment in this video which would be perfect for our background. So that's what I'm going to use. But in the layer structure, I need to put this behind the video. So I'm dragging this layer, the, the other video file, behind the, other, uh, behind the video. And I'm going to right click on it and choose Rasterize Layer. So that will turn the video into a still image. And we already have a really interesting effect, but I would like to make sure that the effects or the adjustments that I was, I, I've been using on the video will also affect the background image. To be able to do that, I just simply need to get rid of the clipping between the adjustment layers and the video. So I've selected the adjustment layers and I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, Command Option G or Control Alt G and that will get rid of that and I will also drag and drop them on top of the video group. So now they will affect the background and the foreground at the same time. Now if I go back in the timeline and I press space, Photoshop will render this video and you can see that we already have the effect that we were looking for. Now only thing we need to do is to export this video and that's what I'm going to do. By clicking on this little arrow here on the bottom left, I can render the video and I can choose the format and size that I would like to render this into. But bear in mind that usually cinegraphs are GIF animations. And uh, unfortunately you can't save it as a GIF file and you can't even turn it into a frame animation because it is a video layer. On the other hand, you can save the video for web and devices as a GIF animation. 
it will take quite a long time so I'm just simply going to show you the settings that I used so these are the settings again if you go to the file menu and choose save for web and devices you will be able to get to the same uh, area and you just simply need to choose GIF and then use all the settings that you can see here at the bottom you can also set the size of the GIF file the final size I chose 600 pixel wide uh, image or GIF animation and I also set the looping to forever so it will give us the looped version at the end and as soon as you click on save you can save your GIF file and in this case I can already see I can tell from the bottom left that it will be around 6 megabytes big which is okay obviously the smaller the better for the internet if you want to uh, publish it on the internet but I think this file size is fairly okay and um, that's all what you need to do and uh, the final result will be your GIF file. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope you will be able to create your own cinegraphs. I would love to see your final results so if you want to share them with me you can always share it on my blog's Facebook page. My blog is yesimadesigner.com and on the main page you can find the Facebook link. Thanks a lot for your attention, good luck with cinegraphs and I'll see you next time.